In this video, I'm gonna be creating an aluminum fuel tank for my supercharged mini jet boat. Up until now, I have been using the OEM plastic fuel tank that came out of the donor jet ski. And although it has been working for testing purposes, it really isn't a good permanent solution, mainly because of the shape of the fuel tank. The bottom of the fuel tank is V-shaped, which is the same shape as the bottom of the jet ski. However, the bottom of my mini jet boat is more flat. And the only way I was able to mount the plastic fuel tank inside of the jet boat was to build this plywood cradle. So now that the plastic fuel tank has been removed from the boat, it's time to fill this empty space right here with a custom made aluminum fuel tank. And here I have all of the pieces I need to build the fuel tank. I did take this to a local welding shop and have them cut this on their shear. And the reason for that is there's just no way I could get these long straight cuts here in the shop and keep them straight and square. Because remember, I'm gonna be TIG welding on this edge and also this is a fuel tank so it's going to be holding a flammable liquid and i want it done right i don't want any mistakes in here so i just bit the bullet took it to the welding shop and let them cut all of the individual pieces i've got the left and right sides tack welded to the bottom of the fuel tank and everything's fitting exactly the way i'm hoping for so now I'm going to put the front and the back on here. I'm just gonna tack weld them on there. And then I'm gonna make sure everything's still square and lined up. And then I'm going to go from there. Okay, so I got the front and the back pieces tacked in and now I have got an expensive fancy metal box. But I am extremely happy with the outcome so far because I've got about a 16th of an inch margin of error and I am just right on that margin. It couldn't get any more perfect than this. I'm really glad that I took those pieces of metal to the welding shop and let them cut that on the shear because I don't think I would have gotten this perfect of a box this easily if I had cut these pieces of metal here in the shop with angle grinders and saws. And I'd love to keep the ball rolling on this project and continue working on the fuel tank but I just ran out of argon, so I won't be doing any more welding and the welding store is closed. So it's gonna be several hours for me before I can continue on this, but for you guys, it'll only be a fraction of a second. Okay, so it's the next day and I went and got my welding gas and I decided before I start welding all of these seams on this fuel tank, I better do a fit check and it's a good thing that I did. And I'm really glad I've got this tacked because if I had welded this, uh, it would be a huge mess right now. But as you can see, the tank does not fit inside the opening. And the reason for that is I wasn't thinking three dimensionally when I did the measurements. So on paper, the flat pieces all fit through the hole. I even cut some cardboard pieces just to make sure that it cleared everything like the engine and the side of the boat. But like I said, I wasn't thinking three dimensionally. So I'm really glad that um, I tack welded this and didn't go ahead and do a full weld before I check this. And according to my calculations, I'm gonna to have to cut about six inches off of the length, which that sucks. I'm gonna lose about five gallons of capacity, but uh, I am going to weld some tabs, some mounting tabs here on the bottom edge of this. So I've got to account for that as well. So I think six inches uh, off the length will make it fit. I hope so. I'd hate to have to go through and do this another time, but uh, let me cut this thing apart, uh, get the length cut down and we will continue on with the build. Okay, so I've got fuel tank 2.0 here in the boat and it all fit. I did wind up cutting six inches off of the length. I probably could have gotten away with about four, four and a half inches, but uh, I needed to make room for those mounting tabs. I'm gonna put one here and then one on the other end. So now that I know that it fits, I am good to go with welding up fuel tank 2.0. And before I start welding on this fuel tank, I do want to point out there is an issue. Uh, actually, there's two issues, but I'm going to solve both of them with the same procedure here. 
Let me show you the first one. I've got my tape measure, and if I measure right here on the inside dimension, I get 15 inches right here on the ends of the tank. But if I measure right here in the middle, it's more like 15 and a quarter. And the reason for that is the metal has a slight bend to it. It just came that way from the metal supplier. And uh, I just need to push this in before I start welding on it. And the second issue I've got is I don't want my fuel sloshing around inside of this big tank. So what I'm going to do to solve both of these issues is I'm going to put some baffles inside of the tank. So installing these baffles will not only prevent the amount of fuel that can slosh forwards and backwards inside of the tank, I can also pull in this dimension on the inside and get it back to the 15 inches that it needs to be. And I also need to take note of where this fuel sending unit needs to go. This is from the gas tank of the jet ski. It has the fuel pump and also the fuel sending unit for the fuel gauge. And I want to make sure that this float can travel freely. I don't want it to bump up against the baffle or the sides of the tank because that would skew the fuel tank readings on the dashboard. Okay, so I'm all set up to cut this aluminum with my four inch Hercules hole saw. Hercules, Hercules, Hercules. And as you can see here, I have drilled this hole right here. And I saw this on TikTok and I've always wondered, hey, does this really work? And this is the perfect opportunity to try it out. They said to drill this hole here when you're using a hole saw and that will keep the teeth from loading up as the saw cuts deeper into the aluminum. So. Let's find out together if this is something that will actually work or if it's just a bunch of hogwash to get views on Instagram. Okay, so I've made the cut with the saw. I did stop a couple of times to check and sure enough, the teeth never did load up and the little groove, if you've ever used a hole saw, you know if you make a deep cut, the little groove that it makes sometimes will fill up with chips. That never filled up either. So there may be something to this little trick. I'm gonna to continue to try this for future projects, but if you've done something similar to this and you had different results, let me know down in the comments.
Okay, so I know some of you are wondering what on earth is going on here? Aluminum isn't supposed to burn like that. And it took me a minute to figure it out, but I think I know what's going on. Before making a weld, I always clean it, and that means I usually wipe it down with acetone. What I normally do is just take the acetone, squirt it on a rag, and then just wipe the pieces down that I'm going to weld. But for some reason, this time, I squirted the acetone directly onto the pieces, and some of that acetone got in between the two pieces that I was going to weld. And then when the welder went across there with an arc, it set it on fire. And if I roll back the footage and we take a really close look, after the flame goes out, you can see the acetone actually seeping out from in between those two pieces. And what makes this a little bit scary for me is I could not see that flame through my welding helmet. The only way I knew something wasn't right was the welder was making some spattering noises and I stopped and then I saw the flame. So I'm really glad I had my thick welding gloves on, my fire retardant sleeves, and my welding helmet because I probably would have burned myself if I wasn't wearing that safety equipment. Now I'm gonna switch over and do some TIG welding. I am gonna use my Yes Welder CT2050, and this is an AC-DC TIG welder, and I did a review on this about a year ago, and I'll put a link to that review up here in the corner of the screen, and also down in the description. Check that out if that's something you might be interested in. And the settings I'm going to have on this, it's going to be 105 amps and 40% balance at 120 hertz. And I'm also going to be using some Yes Welder 2% lanthanated blue tungsten that is 1 16th of an inch diameter. Sorry to interrupt this montage, but have you ever had a project that the more you worked on it, the more disgusted you got with it? Well, that's this one right here. Um, I'm totally disgusted with this project. I'm going to mark it up in the fail column, so let me explain what's going on. So I did finish the TIG welding, and after that, I just called it a day. I went inside, came back the next day, looked at the TIG welds, and just realized they are very ugly. I do not like the way that the TIG welds look. And not only are they ugly looking, they also leak air. And let me explain. I blocked these openings off here and I put a regulator on the vent line right here and I filled the tank up with compressed air uh, up to five PSI. Then I sprayed all of these welds down with some soapy water and they foam. I mean, it is just spewing air out of every little nook and cranny. Uh, all of the welds, they're just leaking. So I tried to go back and fix them, and I went over all of the little places where I had marked where there was a leak, filled it with compressed air again, and there's even more leaks that I didn't find the first time. And not only that, not only is it leaking, Apparently, I forgot to weld the bottom of the tank to the baffles, so there's nothing supporting the bottom. And when I fill this up with five PSI of compressed air, the bottom pops out. So now it's all rounded and it doesn't want to sit flat. So, like I said, it's just problem after problem. This has been a complete disaster, if you ask me. Uh, this is the first fail I've had on the channel but I just don't see any point continuing with this. I don't feel safe 
with this tank. I do not feel safe putting 27 gallons of extremely flammable liquid into it and then going out on the water on the boat. So like I said, I'm going to mark this up as a fail. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to put the jet ski fuel tank back in the boat and I'm going to run with that for a while. Uh, the weather has broke here where I live in Tennessee. This weekend, we're going to have mid to upper 70s uh, for the temperatures. And I'm ready to put this boat out on the water because it's hard to believe. But next month, it will be the two year mark that I have been working on this. And I did kind of complete it last fall and it's pretty much sat in here all winter and I've just kind of finished off all the little small projects that it needed, but it's done. It's ready to go in the water and I wanna have some fun with it. And I will come back and revisit this maybe this fall or winter uh, when I put the boat up for the season. Uh, this will be a good winter project, but right now I wanna go on to other projects uh, on the channel and I just don't wanna waste any more time on this. And like I said, uh, I just don't feel safe with it. Uh, Mrs. Making Stuff has also told me she will not get in the boat if this fuel tank is in it and it has gasoline in it. And right now I don't blame her. And like I said, I'm going to mark this in the fail column. Uh, I don't really ever consider something a complete fail because I have learned a lot and I know what not to do the next time. And if you're trying to make one of these fuel tanks on your own, now you know some of the mistakes that I have made and hopefully you won't make them as well. So I hope you liked the video. If you did, please give me that big thumbs up. And if you aren't a subscriber, please consider hitting that subscribe button and ringing the bell so you don't miss any upcoming Making Stuff videos. And thanks for watching.